1, 7 through 9. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning, and we just thank you for bringing all of us here. God, we thank you for all that you provide for us. God, we pray that we're faithful in learning who you are and who we are through Scripture, through who, because of who you are that we know exactly who you are. God, we pray that we're faithful in living our lives in accordance with Scripture. God, we pray that the Holy Spirit make us aware of our sin, of our shortcomings. And God, we pray that we'd be willing to change our desires to align with yours. God, that you convict us, that you change us to be who you want us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. And welcome, Westsiders. Welcome to what's going to be the coldest week of the year. That's all right. This is a warm place to worship. And I think that if you're new and you're visiting and haven't been here for a while, you'll figure that out. If you're new and you have not been here ever, and you've never filled out one of our welcome cards, in the pew in front of you, you'll find this welcome card. And if you would, just take a few moments, fill it out, and then before you leave, in the foyer, there's a welcome table, and they have a, a little thing for you, a little, uh, I don't want to call it a gift, but a package that kind of describes who we are, and we just want to thank you for your uh, your presence today. In your book, and there's a couple of announcements that uh, I think uh, uh, merit uh, going over, and the first announcement is going to be on the inside cover, uh, kind of a strange place, it's on the coming up, you'll notice that on the inside, right under the scripture references for today's sermon. And it says, next Sunday, Reverend Ron L. Mesidor, the director of Source of Light Center in the Port of Prince, Haiti, will deliver the sermon about his mission work. This is kind of a big deal for us as West Side, because first of all, we're looking at going to Haiti next year as a mission project. And secondly, this guy's full-time down in Haiti. He's on furlough for just five days here in Virginia. How we got so fortunate uh, to get him to come and speak at this time, I would say that the planets lined up just right. So at any rate, uh, it should be a very interesting sermon. Hopefully it will be very informative. And I want to make sure that you uh, are personally uh, invited to come. Come next Sunday, it should be a, uh, a very interesting service. Also, while you're inside your bulletin, Hall of Faith, study of Hebrews and faith. So if, if you would, fill that out and uh, submit that into the offering plate if you uh, plan on uh, attending. I think there's going to be uh, uh, maybe some more talk about that here in a second. Other things of interest, that is today there's a church council meeting. That doesn't, those of you who are on church council, you already know that, so I don't need to announce that. But we do also have a business meeting tonight. That's going to be at 6 p.m. So uh, you may want to uh, uh, attend that. I do not know of any uh, particular uh, motions that are going to be raised, so uh, that part uh, should work well for us. Uh, you may want to read the uh, little elevator announcement if you haven't already read it. It's about watching your kids before they push the emergency buttons. And then likewise, while you're watching your kids, watch your kids as they cross the parking lot. We um, don't want to have any more near misses in that regards. Um, Wednesday night, we will be having a, um, um, a pot roast, and so that should be very good. And you'll notice that if, if you try to come in the back door, it's uh, the new back doors are wide open and working just fine. The old kitchen door has been barricaded, it's got blue tape on it, and that's because we're trying to renovate the kitchen. And uh, we'd like to say that we're further along than we thought, um, but we're not. Uh, we have run into a plumbing challenge, yeah, for sewer pipes. 
And uh, so at any rate, um, we have engineers working on that. And so uh, you couldn't come in the door this this week and you won't be able to come in next week. I don't know when that door is going to open up again uh, in the near future. But until we get it all resolved, um, shoot, park by the rear entrance and come in the, uh, the nice uh, rear foyer. Other than that, uh, there's a special call business meeting to, uh, that's going to be on Sunday, January the 7th, and this is going to be a calling for the person who is going to fill Morgan's shoes. So that should be very interesting. And that's all I have for you, so I turn the mic to Joe. Good morning. Actually, it's February 7th for that call business meeting to go backwards to January. Uh, I've been asked to say a few words about our uh, Bible study at the UC. This study is quite exceptional. Um, I can talk from my own perspective. It's been going about six years. Vicki Heschel actually started it. And she and Sue Claypool, Mary Mines, and myself, Joe, have uh, been facilitating it. I didn't go the first couple of years because I had other things I thought more important to do until I started going to it. I dropped my other nighttime activities to attend it, and I thought, well, I'm not very outgoing, so I'll just sit there and listen, which I did the first, first session. And then as time went on, as the people who attend the group will find out, you get more and more comfortable, and you get closer, and there's a big bond that forms within the group. It's like a family within a family, kind of an inner circle, so to speak. So after one or two uh, sessions, and I started to help them facilitate, and by now I really look forward to that, week to week. And then, uh, you know, you spend time delving in the study of the Word. You find out things that you never even thought were possible or that God had planned for us. The big part of the, the class that I find is that not only the study, but it's the interaction within the group. The circumstances and the happenings in different people's lives and their willingness to share. And you, you grow from all of those. And you find out, well, I'm not the only one going through these problems. You know, my faith can be uh, challenged at times. We find that everybody goes through that. And that's going to lead into this one. This session coming up, starting Tuesday at 5.30, is on Hebrews chapter 11, about faith. <clears throat> Out in the foyer, you'll find a handout like this. It's kind of an overview of the chapter. And some of the topics are, why was the writing of the book of Hebrews necessary? What is faith? Heart faith is action. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of all things we cannot see. And since we haven't seen Christ in person, faith is very important to us. We're bound by faith. We live by faith. And that's what guides us through and gives us the peace of mind and comfort. So anyone willing to come out, uh, we'll be glad to see you at 5.30 p.m. down at the UC. Even if you think you don't have anything to share, you might be surprised as you attend. It's a 10-week course or class, if you will. It runs until April 9th. And there's always food provided. Different people provide food, treats, and all that. So we're not without condiments, if you will. Even visitors from outside are welcome. Thank you. Stand again with us as we worship your song. <laughs>
today we're talking about scripture and what that means for us. The power that it has. How can we apply that to our lives? How can we truly learn scripture? You know, we just heard about Bible study from Joe Claypool. There's other Bible studies throughout the church. There's ways to get involved. Ways to study scripture with people. I know that that's when I end up finding so much stuff. Um, is through talking things out. Through really relating that to people. And so... Today we're talking about scripture and what that means. As we sing wonderful words of life, think about what scripture really means for us.
Could all the children come up, please? <coughs> I know I'm not Pastor Troy, but you, I can tell a pretty good story sometimes. <coughs> It says 10 cents. 
And so, so you will have a coin that you can look at that says, uh, to trust in God we trust. There you go. Okay. So let's have a prayer so you can go to the technician. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for these children. And we thank you for the message, even on the penny, that tells us that in God we trust. That's where our trust should always be, is with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, huh? No, that's yours. Uh, throughout the pew, 
And so we've got them in every one. So if you need a pen, please ask a uh, ask someone to pass one down or reach to the queue in front of you or behind you and grab a pen. But we all have pens, and I think they all work because I've checked most of them. So make sure that they work through that. So as you get your piece of paper and pen, here's what we're going to do. Uh, with your non-writing hand, put your hand on that piece of paper and trace your hand. All right? Trace your hand around the other piece of hand. Some of you are like, what are we doing? I, this is stuff I've done in first grade. Uh, yeah, childish stuff. But I will say, some people learn in different ways. Some people are audio learners. Some people are visual learners. Some people are discovery learners. And whatever we can do to try to help those people learn uh, a little visual aid sometimes helps out. But also, once I, as I said, it keeps everyone engaged with it. So please trace around your hand and try to, try to do it pretty neatly because you're going to be writing on some of your fingers through that. When you get done tracing your hand at the top of the page, write God's word. Because the focus of us getting deeper with our relationship with God is all in the most important part is using God's word to get that deepness. So write God's word at the top of it. All right, now I've heard something, uh, some rumors from far off places, not within the walls of Westside, uh, that sometimes when people are told something, they forget it and don't follow through. Like I said, it doesn't happen here at Westside, but I've heard rumors that it happens in far off places, especially sometimes between husbands and wives, where the wife would tell the husband to do something and he gets distracted and forgets to do it. Uh, and also, from experience, I know this never happens to teenagers. Because the first time I tell them to do something, it is just like marching orders. They know how to do it. And I know the parents, I always hear all the time with parents, they always say, man, my teenager does everything I say. And so for all your teenagers who are doing everything you say, pass this information on to your teenage friends who aren't doing this. Because I know we've got a bunch of halo polishers here at Westside. So, all right, on your pinky, on your hand, right hearing, 10%. Hearing 10%. If all you do is hear something, there is only a 10% chance that that information is retained for long term. All right, for the most part, sometimes 10% is good. Like when we're talking about tithing, 10% good. When you're talking about your cut of a billion dollar lottery, 10% is good. All right, but for other things like that, 10% uh, sometimes is not always that great. Uh, think about it in this in this terms, uh, this image. Say that you want to hold on to something physically that is very important to you. Or you have that in mind, something very important physically that you want to hold on to. Now, how long can you hold on to that with just using your pinky? Probably not too long. You know, you need some more help. You need something more for the long haul with that. And I think that James 1.22 explains it perfectly when it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. It feels like James knows about that 10% right there, about just listening. Uh, it doesn't get much. Next finger, right, reading, 25%. Right, when you combine hearing information and reading information, the retention rate goes up to 25%. Now, first of all, let's never, ever take for granted that we have God's Word in front of us, that we have the ability to read what He has for us, that His words are not hidden from us. That's something we really shouldn't take for granted. Uh, in the youth group, we're having our Bible lessons, and we have a, a number of verses to, to read. I always tell them after I tell the verses, read to comprehend, don't read to finish. <laughs> You know, when we're reading God's Word, we must read it with a purpose and not just to check it off a list or, or finish a task because that's what God's Word is. That's the, the true beauty of God's Word is knowing that it's in front of us. And why else would we read something unless we want to try to retain the, the uh, information? All right, the next finger, studying. 
and we're going up to 50%. Study, we're up to 50. Adding study to hearing and reading brings the retention rate of information up to 50%. Pretty good percentage, especially if we're talking baseball batting average. Uh, but also, 50% is progress towards deepness. And also studying, it's the first of these three things that actually takes some focused participation on your part. Because, you know, you can tune out when someone's saying something to you. You can glaze over some words when you're reading. Uh, but studying, studying's intentional. Studying takes your time. Studying takes your focus. And like what Joe said today, you know, we have plenty of opportunities here at Westside. If one of the things that you're lacking on, say that you've got the reading down and the hearing down, but you need some way to go deeper, you know, we've got plenty of those opportunities here at Westside. And like what Joe said, Joe is one of the nicest men you'll meet, but he's also one of the quietest men you'll meet, which there's nothing wrong with that. But he's saying that, you know, just being around those people, taking the time to really dig into God's Word, along with other people, you know, it brought out his willingness to speak, or he talked about his willingness to participate. And once again, participating in God's Word and participating in growing deeper through relationship. I'd probably say we could line up everybody who's been through those Bible studies on Tuesday nights. We could ask them, hey, has your relationship with God grown deeper? And I'm pretty sure that rate would be 100% that they've grown deeper. That's why? Because they are engaging in study. So they're not just hearing, they're not just reading, but they're adding the study side to that. Um, and also, you know, even though if you have sometimes where your day's busy or you can't make it on Tuesdays, you know, obviously we have things on Sundays. We have things on Wednesdays. Uh, and the other part, the good part about, you know, so many materials being given to us these days is we can find a study, too, is about if you just need to do one on your own, they're pretty easy to find. So if you ever need help with that, please talk to someone about that. Talk to me. Talk to the pastor. Talk to some of the people we have that have been through uh, seminary training because there's plenty of opportunities to have studies involved with us through that. Uh, and also, when you're studying, Keep notebooks when you're that. Keep writing with that. Because one of the things we've done also with the youth group, you've heard me mention that, reference them many times, is I keep the, I have them keep notebooks of the Bible studies that we go through. And I don't tell them what to write in those things. I say, hey, whatever piques your interest, whatever interests you, whatever nugget of information that we talk about that can make you go back to that moment in time to make you remember what we talked about, write that stuff down. And so that they will have that notebook with them from years on, and they can remember what they had talked about. And once again, it also gives them a way to engage in the study that we have. Uh, Psalm 119, 9 through 11 is in your bullets, and it adds so much emphasis of the study, where it says, How can a young person keep their way pure? By living accordance to your word. I will seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That also sounds like some verses of someone who's doing some study, that the words would not be hidden from their heart. Next, on your ring finger, write memorizing. And this is where we, I should hear the collective groan, because people say, oh, memorizing. All right, but the constant study of something probably will lead to memorization. And the key word being constant. It has to be a constant study, not just on Sunday mornings, uh, not just looking through a daily devotional, but a constant through that. Now, at, at Student Life Camp we had this last summer, the student pastor uh, one evening said, raise your hand if you can recite from memory one scripture verse for every year of your life. Now, we had, you know, it was a packed house, we had over 1,200 students. Uh, and the people who attended student life, you can't answer. How many of the 1,200 students do you think raised their hands? They could answer, they could recite a verse of scripture for every year they were alive. Three or four. We had one. One out of 1,200 that could do that. Man, it sounds like a tall task, doesn't it? It really does. What should it be a tall task? Uh, I mean, John 11, 35 is a freebie. Does anybody know John 11, 35? Jesus wept. All right, that's a free one. All right, so that we can cross that one off your list right now. All right, we can all come up with excuses about Adam and memorize things well, but how many of us can sing dozens of songs after we just hear the first few notes of that song? All right, 
The brain has amazing capabilities when it's pushed. And I'm no better example of that. Like as some of y'all who have been here for a while know that I went kicking and screaming to finish up my seminary degree by taking Greek. All right, whenever you hear that word, hey, it's all Greek to me, it really is. It is a crazy, <laughs> whacked out language. And for some of the classes that I had to take, we had to memorize 30 vocab Greek vocabulary words every week and have a quiz on them every single week. And not only did we have to memorize the 30 words of vocabulary, we had to memorize verses. And not only did we have to memorize them, we had to recite them in front of the class. So think about doing that. Having quizzes on vocabulary words and then having to memorize verses and walking in front of your classmates and reciting them. All right, it was bad. But if you wanted a good grade, you wanted to get the job done, you had to take the time to do it. I mean, it got to the point where I was seeing Greek everywhere I was going. I was seeing it on license plates, on cars in front of me. I was seeing it in on billboards and signs. I was like, well, man, that's misspelled. But then I was like, oh, that's English. And I'm trying to get Greek. All of those things. I'm telling you, whenever the hearing, reading, studying, and then when it turns to memorization, it will saturate your brain through that. And what better thing to saturate your brain with than the Word of God? All right? But it just reinforces that when study turns into memorization, memorization turns into transformation. And transformation will definitely get you deeper. All right, for the thumb, we're on the thumb. Right meditation. No, this doesn't involve flowing robes, incense, and those little funky finger symbols that we all think about when we think of meditation. All right, when you put the previous four things together, hearing, reading, study, and memorization, your mind's going to be inundated with the topic you're feeding. And you can see it in all aspects of your life. When you put that much time into something that you want to think about, and I really mean think about, apart from all distractions, that's what we're talking about when we talk about meditation. Now, the definition... The Webster's definition of meditate is to focus one's thoughts, reflect on, or ponder over. All right, how many of us do that with anything in our lives? How long do we focus one thoughts, one's thoughts, reflect on, or ponder over? And that's, that's what we're talking about here with meditating on God's Word. Again, I think the best person to do, uh, follow the lead on this is Jesus. All right, whenever we're wanting to have a deep relationship with God, I think Jesus is a good place to go to. Uh, his disciples, he and his disciples, through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are over, there are 23 examples of times where Jesus and his disciples were with crowds, and they just kind of went off on their own. They left the crowds, the distractions, the responsibilities of them to themselves, and they went and got away. And when he did this, we can read him a lot of those things that God just, that Jesus just prayed and talked to God and got away. Think about how much of it, how much our spiritual life would change if we would just take time to meditate on what God's given us. Just take some serious time and think about what he's trying to teach us. Uh, it was part of God's routine, Jesus' routine. And so why can't it be a part of ours? A Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says... Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not fall. Whatever they do prospers. It all comes down to meditating, focusing on, pondering God's word. Now remember at the end of uh, when we were talking about the pinky, and I gave the illustration about if you really want to hold on to something tight, about how long can you hold on to it with the pinky. Now we have added a bunch of more fingers to that. Now we have the ability to hold on to something a lot more tighter than just what we had when we had our 10% pinky going. Now across the palm, right application. Application. And we have the ability to dive deep into the knowledge God has for us. And the beauty of it is, is God has met us, but how far do we want to go? 
another visual reference about going deeper. Think about the ocean. Are we on the picture of the ocean? All right, it looks really nice from the beach, doesn't it? But it looks better when you're snorkeling. And it looks amazing when you can scuba. And what's the difference in all of those? The deeper you get to it, the more you can see, the more the, the amazement can happen, the more you have an appreciation with it. And when you're at the point where the majority of your words, actions, and decisions are based on the knowledge of God that we have learned through hearing, reading, studying, meditating, memorizing, applying, that's when our lives are changed. And that's where God wants us. Now, I started with James 1.22, and I'm going to finish with James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. But at this time, I'd like to have the worship crew come back up. And we will have a hymn of response. Now, at this time, I also would like the deacons if they would step out. And just think about what we've done today. Think about what we've gone through. And about maybe you're on the way for a deacon relationship with God. But maybe what you've heard today can get you a little bit deeper. Maybe you think, hey man, I'm pretty good with the reading here and the study, but I need part of memorization, or I need to really take some time away from the distractions and meditate on God's Word. And that's up to you, but God's going to meet you wherever you are. And if you need some time, if you want to talk to one of the deacons about even just having a relationship with God, if you can't even get to the, you know, if you're struggling to the point where you're just having the motivation just to hear God's Word, please talk to one of us, because that's what we're here for. Because we're all wanting to see everyone have a deeper relationship with God. So let our brothers just with each other roll around.
attending today. Uh, hopefully, you'll have a little bit of motivation and encouragement to go deep with your relationship with God through this. Uh, once again, staff is always here for you through that time. So let's pray and uh, get out there and have a nice uh, warm day out in uh, Harrisburg. <laughs> Heavenly Father, just thank you for your work. Thank you all that you do for us. And, uh, help us to run after you and chase after you and deepen our relationship with you so our relationship with others will grow strong. And just watch over us this week. Let our words and actions show others how much we love you. In your name I pray. Amen.